Good morning, and you're very welcome to this morning's live Q&A. Uh, with the bank holiday weekend, the beautiful weather, and all the questions that we've received over the last few weeks about painting, uh, we thought it would be the perfect time to invite Cora Collins back for another painting and colour Q&A. So, you know, we've just been inundated with questions and I have to say thank you so much for participating, for your amazing feedback, for all the enthusiasm around these live sessions. It's just wonderful to be able to uh, reach out and help everybody um, during this time. Um, I just want to let everybody know as well, I know some of you have downloaded our colour ebook. So that's a really useful tool if you are kind of struggling with choosing colours. I've kind of put together all my top tips, um, a lot of do's and don'ts, just kind of key things to think about when you're trying to choose colour for your home. So if you are planning a painting project, it's really worth downloading that. We'll put the link in the bio so that you can uh, do that whenever you need to. And then some of you as well have been asking about um, getting more help, like a consultancy or, you know, just one-to-one -one help. So we are offering one-to-one -one 30 minute consultations. So these are ideal if you're looking to choose colour for your home. They're also ideal for anything really. So, you know, we our team of architects, interior designers are there. Um, so if you just follow the book a call link, you can book a call with one of the team. They can chat through how it works and we're here to help. Okay, so um, I'm just going to invite Cora now, I see her there, to join. There we go. Brilliant. <laughs> Hi, Hi Cora, good morning, how are you? I'm good, can you hear me okay? Perfect, perfect, good. yes. It's nice to see you again. Yes, you too, and it seems beautifully sunny uh, with you in Cork as well, is it? Yeah, I had to sh close the shutters. The sun is beaming in here. It was really bright. It's beautiful. Well, this is it. This is, and I'm worried it's going to get a bit hot in here now after a while, so we'll see. Yeah. Fingers crossed it'll be okay. Um, so thank you so much for joining us again. I mean, it was wonderful to chat to you the last time. I think people got so many useful tips and hints, and it was so funny, you know, um, just the amount of people that took on a painting project. They hadn't even been planning a painting project oh, until they, they watched the live. So I don't know what we started, Cora, but anyway, there's, oh, there's lots of people painting all over the country, which is great. Um, and I, even myself, you know, as I'm going around walking and stuff, it's so lovely to see people taking on these projects themselves, you know, yes. and the care and attention and, you yeah. know, even if it's a, 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 an outside wall or something like that. And just to see the yeah. transformation that people are making happen themselves. So it, it, it's such a wonderful uh, thing to be able to do and, and a great project to take on. Yeah, people are so proud of their homes and we're spending so much time yeah. there at the moment. I notice as well how creative people are and uh, and want to be. And I've been doing uh, these little videos on, you know, how to use some leftover paint and stuff like that myself. Yeah. And yeah. just um, how uh, tuned in you become when you're out and about. And I found old slate the other day and I was like, I can paint on that. I can paint yeah. that rock, you know. And, Lovely. And just yeah. even small projects that the kids can get involved in. It's great. Yeah. It's great yeah. to do this kind of stuff. I know, it's gorgeous. It really is. Yes, I've seen some of your videos. They're absolutely wonderful. They're ingenious. So everybody should check those out after this if you yeah. get a chance. Uh, they're really lovely ideas. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, look, Cora, I think, we, you know, the two of us were chatting about this and what we thought would be really helpful for people um, was to go through the do's and don'ts. Oh. So I guess some of the most commonly made mistakes hopefully help people avoid some of these uh, mistakes and help them make really good colour choices when they're choosing colours for their own homes. And I'm going to try something a bit different today. I hope I can get it to work. I've never tried it. <laughs> we might try and share a few images as well, just to give people an example of what we're talking about. And I know you've given me some fabulous stuff for outside as well. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully that works. I'll go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I guess just one of the things, one of my uh, uh, big don'ts is um, when you're choosing colours for interiors to steer clear of things with hints of peaches or pink undertones. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I suppose the best example I can give people of that kind of color is magnolia. You know, that very peachy yeah. color, because interestingly enough, it's really hard color to make work with other colors. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people um, 
maybe just don't think about, they're very concerned about the wall color and getting it up on the wall and, you know, maybe matching it to a floor or something. But then, like we were discussing last time, your sofa, your curtains, even the artwork that you you put in the room will all have an impact on that color. Yes. And that's where those peachy or kind of pinky tones don't tend to work so well. Um, So have you, because I know you had some fabulous color um, advice the last time, just with your experience of, of those kind of shades and... Yeah, I suppose it's all about the mix. It's all about what, what goes in there. And yeah. it's funny because I, I get often I would be talking to people who, like yourself, working in the same area as we're in and uh, mm-hmm. talking about colour and, um, you know, trying to, trying, trying to for people to describe what they're trying to get. They want something that's warm, but they don't want mm-hmm. yellow in it. They want mm-hmm. something that's, you know, that might feel, feel cosy, but they don't want it to be a magnolia or a peach or whatever. And yeah, then, yeah. then there's this, uh, you know, sudden aversion now towards grey, maybe, that people are maybe fed up of it or, you know, whatever. And it's just, yeah. it's very hard to describe uh, what goes into a colour. But when you do mix paint, and my background is in art, and I would know what is the content of any particular colour. And that's the thing about Magnolia. It, it has red and it has yellow in it. And, it. and obviously a good quantity of white then as well. And those colours advance towards you. And it's the whole rule of warm colours advancing, cool colours receding. So they'll always mm-hmm. kind of come forward. So even if you have a beautiful painting that has blues in it and other colours in it, the wall mm. is going to nearly take over a bit, even if yeah. it is a very pale colour. Yeah. So we have to be mindful to have colours that recede if you want something else to advance. And it's just that kind of rule. It's about talking to yourself a little bit beforehand. Yeah. Uh, whatever kind of a feature you're going for, if you want something to stand out, and if it is a piece of art, well, then your walls need to be quiet and to sit back and let that be the thing. So I'd, I'd be very much in agreement with you about those kind of warmer neutrals. I just find yeah. the, the peachy and the yellow undertoned ones tend to just be um, bullies, you know, yeah. when it comes to, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I know they're so popular because there's, people feel they go with everything. Yeah. And you can yeah, tell yeah, yeah. that they do, yeah. but then yeah. they tend to make the room feel smaller. Yeah. So, you know, it could be because of the fact that they advance. So I'm definitely for the neutral, the slightly grayed off, uh, maybe green undertones that would be in the, the neutrals that I like and mm. find that they're very quiet and they allow other colors to come forward. And I think that's, that's right. Kind of advice yeah. That yeah. yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I would agree with that. It's those sort of what I would call earthy tones, you oh. know, so it is having those um almost like those sandy beiges warmer grays those kind of yeah. colors and they they do they're just so easy to live with they're they're quite yeah. tranquil in a room as you say like i love that you know that the steer clear of the bullies in in the yeah. it, it, it's so true it just takes yeah. over and dominates and for many people they don't really understand like why is this room not working it's yeah. you know it's driving me mad but yeah the color you choose is a massive impact on yeah. the atmosphere um, yeah. So, yeah, those camera colours are, are yeah. really, really lovely. I kind of think that you really only need maybe one neutral colour for a house. You know, if it, if it comes mm. down to if you're doing a new house, I'm not saying paint every wall in the house in the one colour, but mm-hmm. just think of your, your kind of your base uh, and the way that Magnolia would have been for years ago, that the kind of colour that you'd put everywhere. If you yeah. have a colour, if you find one that you really like, um, and, you know, as I said to you last time, I love subtle, subtle cobble, you know, particular colours that, that just you find uh, and they change in different rooms simply because exactly. of the light. Yes, you know, exactly, so exactly. They don't look the same everywhere. And then yeah. you start adding in the rest of your palette. But if that's a good neutral, everything else will go with it. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's like in clothes when you have one good item that you feel everything yeah. else goes with. It's like jeans, you know. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, you they're, just build on it then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But that's the key one to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's loads. We have so many of those. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that's the thing. People kind of think about trends then and they think maybe that greys are the trend at the moment or, mm-hmm. um, you know, different, different shades like that. And I would be saying really the base neutral is, is what matters. And then you mm-hmm. can add a trend if you want to a, another wall or, you know, a kitchen island unit or someplace else yeah. that yeah. can change. But yeah. the base one is the important one. Just yeah, keep it system. neutral. No, definitely. Well, like the color I have here on the wall um, is one that we we would recommend a lot if people are looking for that one color to put everywhere. Oh. So they don't want to go for white, but they want something that's going to work with a lot of things. And that's subtle cinder. 
Yeah. And again, like you're saying, it is amazing how different it looks, you know, so it's mm. going to look totally different in a hallway than it will in a big bright yeah. space like this, you know, so like just having the right tone and then it goes with so many things and mm. that's so different. So Cora, I'm going to try and see now, I ho really hope this works, but anyway, we'll see if I can add a little picture um, because I can show actually how two colors which are exactly the same can look totally totally different so if i pull so that so oh, you can see that on, there we go oh, my goodness okay fabulous yeah so this this is actually mid cinder so the the cinders are fantastic colors and they just for some reason they just work so they can look mm -hmm. really really gray or they can look really really warm depending on on where you use them so this was a kitchen where like we went a bit mad, used pink and, and things like that. But you can see that that color then really kind of calms it down. So yeah. where that room could have looked really crazy with the very strong colors, all of a sudden by choosing that really nice neutral backdrop, it, it sort of added a layer of calm and just made the room really easy to live with. But then if I look, um, and I just show you hopefully, if you can find it. I love the way the art looks with that picture, that color behind us. It really makes the art come forward, which is the, the important piece, isn't it? Exactly. No, 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 for sure. And, you know, like these neutral shades, it's, it's often nice as well if you have a piece of art that you're thinking of hanging, if you can find kind of a tone in the painting yeah. um, to choose. It's sort of a neutral tone um, mm -hmm. that can work really, really well as well. I'm sorry about this. I'm struggling to find this other shade, but... Uh... Right. The mid center that you're looking at there, that, that pink uh, unit to the left, that could be changed again and again several times and never change the mid, the mid center. That's so right, that's really exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just about having your base. Mm -hmm. All about the base. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> so this one here, actually, I can show you this one here. So this, again, if you can see, so that, that's oh, again yeah. the mid cinder. But what yeah. we did then was pair that with kind of a dusky, a little bit like denim drift, I suppose, um, color. But again, it just shows you where you can add your impact in the joinery, but keeping everything else really, yeah. really neutral. Um, and just the effect is, again, very calming, very soft, very easy to live with, and just opens up a huge amount of possibilities then, yes. um, you know, for how you want to dress that out. So we oh. brought yellow in here as a little accent but there's so many options there depending yeah. on, on what you want to use. And um, it's funny how the cooler color of the joinery makes the, the mid center look that bit cooler and more gray. In exactly. The, in it, yeah, it changes it completely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. Yeah. And then just on the warmer shades core, there's um, one of my favorites, which is pure muslin. I don't know if you've used that often. Oh, I have. Yeah, I love it. So, so that's a really lovely one. So it's, it's yeah. I suppose it's got kind of grayish um, undertones to it, but it's a really, again, a very tranq tranquil calming, but it has those warmer tones. So you can start to layer in kind of beiges, you know, tans, yeah. anything like that, and give it a totally different look, which works really well. So that's oh. a great shade. That's amazing. Um, like we've used that in rooms where we painted the joinery out, um, you know, living rooms it just kind of works in in, a, in so many different spaces mm -hmm. in so many different ways, which is fantastic. And this and would, is you, would you do what I do, um, Denise, as well, where you might bring that color into another room as well, um, yes. you know, to, within a house that you would use the same color two or three times? Absolutely, yeah. So like we would often use it, um, particularly where rooms are linking into one another. So for example, here in this house, so this is again, pure mm -hmm. muslin, but you can see it looks very different in this space you know that yeah. the furniture and things are different and this is an example actually of where we painted that low joinery unit in the same color yeah. but then we let that flow through into the kitchen space but because that yeah. was a much brighter and completely different feel it brightened up it lightened right up so they look yeah. totally different as but, you move but through that's the cozy space. as well isn't it so it is yeah that everyone is kind of talking about really it's a cozy color without having the yellow base yeah. Yeah, uh, so yeah. It, it's very quiet. It's beautiful, really calm, actually. Really yeah. nice. No, it's great. And actually, we got a great question um, from a lady. I just open it up here. Who um, she had a navy feature wall. Mm -hmm. And then all of her other walls um, were kind of painted. I think ivory tusk is what she says. Okay. 
Now, when I, she did send me a photograph. I don't want to share it just in case she wasn't happy for me to do that. But she had the yes. most beautiful, beautiful rug in the room. Um, really contemporary, not dissimilar to uh, the image here, but slightly different colours. But oh. to me, it looked like this pure muslin would, would work really, really well. And actually, this is a north facing room. Hers is north facing as well. So just mm -hmm. for that lady, I think this, this colour would be absolutely beautiful in, in that space for her. Yes. Um, and I know you, you had a, a comment, actually, uh, Cor, just one of your do's and don'ts was to make sure you work with what you have. And it's so true. There's no yes. point kind of going and painting a room if it's going to, the colour looks fabulous, but it's going to clash with everything in the space. So just yes. working with those elements is really important when choosing colour as well. It is. And I think it's really about being your own consultant at times, you know, trying to look at your space with fresh eyes, not, yeah. um, you know, we get bogged down, especially at the moment for our homes so much that we might not be able to see them with fresh eyes. But if you could kind of pretend for a minute that you've been on holidays and you're just back yeah. and you're looking at the house in, in a fresh eyes and kind of asking yourself questions like what has to stay? You know, mm -hmm. not throwing out that sofa, those curtains will have to stay or, you know, or do they have to go, but mm -hmm. really kind of, chat with yourself about really what you have to work with and then that's your basis i mean every color is workable you know you can there's nothing i would I, I never suggest to people to draw something out or i'd never be one to discard stuff if it didn't suit me because the challenge is to make the colors work mm -hmm. and it's very yeah. it's, it's it's actually easy to do that once you have the knowledge behind the the basis of color and how it works you know yeah so yeah, I think for sure. definitely that's the thing, isn't it? And and even the do's and don'ts, what you, don'ts, what you were saying there about the north facing room, you know, the mm -hmm. fact pure muslin is a deep enough colour, but on mm -hmm. a north facing room, it's still beautiful and cosy. It's not mm -hmm. always about the light. So it's not. No, no, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think it is about that resisting that temptation to try and brighten a north facing room. Yes. You're not going to be able to get more light in there. The colour won't really do that for you. In actual yeah. fact, it can make it feel really cold and, mm. and clinical. So what you're trying to do is make that space feel really cozy and inviting. And I think something like the, the pure muslin really works yeah. for that, which is great. Yeah. It's all about reflecting light, isn't it? So if you have something for the light to reflect off of, mm -hmm. then it'll come back. And so if, the, if the, there isn't light, then there isn't light. And you can't, uh, even going brilliant white in a north facing room just dies. So yeah, you do yeah. need um, surfaces to reflect light from. And if you if you can't do that, then make the best of what you have and make it cozy and make it feel. It's all about how it feels and that mood that you get. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love these images. Um, they're beautiful, Denise. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, working really uh, well. And actually, you've sent me some fabulous images externally. So we had a great question. Um, just a lady who has a bungalow. She says her windows are black the doors and darks or sorry her doors are black as well and then she has dark stone on the front and she's looking for maybe a green uh wants something to brighten it up to lift it to make it more lively um so yeah I, i'd be kind of slow to go for something uh, very bright when you have the stone and the windows dark do you know mm. i would be wondering because i suppose one of the things i'd be thinking about when it comes to outside the, the light is almost, um, it, it's, it's the thing you see first, the brightest colour is what you see first. So you see white mm -hmm. first. And mm -hmm. I know I mentioned that to you the last time. So um, she's got black windows and she's got dark stone. So they're the features I would be saying. So mm -hmm. why not have something that's kind of mid, halfway between the white and the black or the dark grey. Lovely, the, yes. A like yeah. yeah. wing or, or a carry grey, something that is... Um, not going to be a high contrast. You know, the way black and white can be such a high contrast. Yes. It's the highest, it's the most extreme. Um, yes. And maybe to have, if there's reveals in her house, that she might have white on the reveal and then a mid-tone grey mm -hmm. on the wall. You know, what were you thinking? Would you go very dark or very light? No, I think you're right. It's trying to pick up um, some of the tones in the slate, I suppose, yeah. is what I'd be trying to do. So some of those lovely earthy tones. Because, yeah, you want that blend. You don't want that stark jarring contrast yeah. um particularly where you have a couple of things going on so she's got stone she's got black and now she's introducing yeah. a color so it's yeah. important that the whole thing kind of gels and, yeah. and fits together yeah and also the tip i would give for a bungalow as well denise is um if you have a plinth on a bungalow be careful not to have a high contrast between the plinth and the wall because this will shorten the wall the, the wall itself then it's like as if if you have, we'll say, a tarmac drive and you did a black plinth or a Merlin coloured plinth, it's mm. like as if it takes on part of the drive and makes the mm. house shorter. 
Okay. So to yeah. try and have maybe, we'll say we have a, um, a lovely colour in the Weather Shield catalogue, a uh, new one called Winter's Tail. So if we'll say she had Winter's Tail as the grey of the house, and yes. they just went for goose wing on the plinth, they're only yeah. two shades of the same colour, but it yeah. will elongate her house. Um, oh, that's a really beautiful. great tip. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Works. Well, it's similar to the way we would look at skirtings and walls. Yes. Do you know the way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the way the skirting can add to your wall. So it's, yeah. for some reason, people are very comfortable inside choosing colours, but exterior, then they kind of get a block because it's so much wall and it's so exposed. And it's such an expensive mistake if you get it wrong. I know. But I it's know, very okay. similar to inside the way the, the same rules. You know, yeah. it's just that there's so much light when yeah. you're outside. And you had a fabulous tip, actually, about choosing colours. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to go through that? And I might just open one of your images here, uh, Cora. I'll just yeah. pick maybe that one there yeah. so you can chat yeah. about that because I thought that was really lovely. Think, yeah, the reason I included this one, um, that's a colour called Donegal Grass on the main wall. Okay. And then um, what, what, what I was trying to say there really was that the stone being the star of the show, we shouldn't have a colour that's too much lighter than the stone because okay. a, a colour should fall into the stone. And also there's beautiful teak uh, doors there on, uh, around it at the lower section. And I just think that the greens, greens and, and uh, timbers work really well together. So, you yeah, know, um, beautiful. just about like pulling out that green that you can see in the stone mm -hmm. and then having a deeper shade of it. Deeper shades um, are quite in in the exteriors at the moment. Very extreme uh, deep colours as well. And it can look so cool, you know, really yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I, I often think you should go much deeper than you think in exterior yeah. light and always, always test the colour. You can buy all the colours in, a, in a, a tester pot and just paint out a large section of the house uh, so you can see it in exterior light because yes. it's so different than looking at the little colour card chip that I'm showing you there. Oh, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I've noticed as well, Cora, even in my own house here, depending on what the surfaces that you're painting onto. So whether you've got pe pebble dash, whether it's fresh render, whatever that might be, the color will look totally different. And just to bear that in mind as well for yeah. people, because, you know, depending on where um, those two walls will sit together, they can look completely different. So, you know, it's good to test it on the different surfaces as well. It is, and different yeah. textures, as you say. So this mm. pebble dash, it's going to look a good bit deeper because of the fact that the, there's shadows in the pebbles. That's and right. that, that, that adds to it. I often suggest to people to paint out their sample on um, uh, sandpaper because the texture of sandpaper is yeah. similar to, to plaster as well outside. And, and yeah. we would do that in Judas Academy. We would have the samples all painted out on either a heavily textured wallpaper or a sandpaper. And um, people yeah. love the sandpaper because it has that feel. Yes, like the, uh, yeah, no, it's lovely. You know, That's a so, great tip. Yeah. yeah. I think if you, if you never bought a sample pot for any other part of your house, buy it for the exterior. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's the most important sure. place to get that yeah. right, really, isn't it? No, for no. sure. Brilliant. And then is there another one, Corey, you'd like me to share? Oh, this one is absolutely beautiful because we have so many people looking for pinks. Like, it's incredible, yeah. both interior uh, pink. Actually, there's one lady looking for one in her bedroom. Yeah. Um, and I know there we, we did have a range in Signature. I think it was Jasper, which is... Yes. is um, yeah. So I had asked the girls to send me what, what the, so actually this lady had, had suggested lip sync um, mm -hmm. and then ballet pump and femme apparently yes. are all very, very similar to the Jaspers. And the Jaspers are, how would I, how would I describe it? It's, it's not, they're not girly pinks. They're not kind of sugary yeah. pinks. They're yeah, very smoky, I call it. smoky yeah. yeah. And they're just, again, really easy to live with, you know, yeah. just quite calming and neutral so yeah. um yeah, they are and isn't it funny because like a while ago we were kind of going not to go for a hint of pink but because there's so much that like when you look at the makeup of that color there's gray and pink in it and that's yeah. what tones it down and yeah. makes it so easy to live with fem mm -hmm. is a beautiful color i'd highly recommend it for a bedroom and mm -hmm. it's not too feminine so Great. you know okay. that's the thing yeah. about, about about girly colors the color that's on the screen at the moment is a color called wild mushroom too and, oh, okay. and, and the reason I sent you that was just because the whole idea of, of fitting in. Um, you know, if yeah. you're on a terrace or if you're on a street or whatever, do a, do a 360, look around you and see what color gap is there. Mm -hmm. Whether people want to fit in um, and just blend in and be the same as everyone else, that's fine. But if you want to stand out a little or if you want to kind of fit, 
in that terrace. You know, mm -hmm. look at what hasn't been done. And, mm -hmm. and the, the bespoke colours that are in the Weather Shoe catalogue, I've tried and tested all of these. I know that they mm -hmm. work um, mm -hmm. in outside light. So, you know, if you think, oh, oh, there's a blue to my left, there's a green to my right. Whoa, there's, you know, pink could be good. You know, that, that is such, it's a brilliant, brilliant suggestion. Because I know, like, I, I lived in London for a long time. And you'd see those fabulous streets where the colours just yeah. sort of drifted along. And it's such a lovely idea rather than, you know, you get a clump of white houses together and like, it's just so yeah. much more interesting. And like, that is such a beautiful image. So simple, but yeah, it so is. lovely. Yeah, it's and a also fabulous tip. Well, Denise, when you look at a house, it's like when, you, um, when you're inside, if you're talking about a kitchen maybe, and you take out mm. all your units and you take out your patio doors and you take out your internal doors, there's not a lot of wall left. And the yeah. same for exterior. If you look at that house and you take mm -hmm. out the two windows and the door, or even if there was an upstairs, the area is quite small. These yeah, are the places yeah. that we should be brave with colour. Yeah. So even like yeah. your front door or, you know, the main, uh, the main bulk of your house. If you go back and look at it again with the fresh eyes, you'll see there's not that much wall. Yeah. You know, different if it's a, tr if it's a full, you know, uh, house that's in the country, maybe with, you know, you can see all around. But mm -hmm. for something on a street or terrace, I think it's absolutely beautiful to experiment with colour. Yeah, uh, no, it's a wonderful tip. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, yeah. really, really lovely. And there's so many options out there. I think that that's yeah. it. People tend to default to the safe stuff, but why not be brave? Yeah. You're well, we are nervous. Work. We're nervous of spending all this money doing yes. it and then it being wrong. And it's very public and it's a bit embarrassing if it, if, you know, if it's screaming <laughs> at you, you know. So this is where testing yeah. comes in. And being yeah. brave and, yeah. and, uh, and you love it so much more then, you know. You really so yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, I'm conscious I want to get through some of the, the yeah. great questions that we had. Um, one actually, which came up, which I thought was really good, because I'm sure there's an awful lot of people wondering about this. Somebody wanting to paint pine floors. So she was saying that she, it's in a bedroom and that's her stumbling block. Nothing seems to go with the pine floors. And I know this is a challenge because they do oh. tend to yellow. Mm -hmm. um, what, what we have said in the past, because you get a lot of knots and, um, you know, different markings on the pine floor mm. often we would suggest staining them as dark as you possibly can oh, do, yeah. do you have any recommendations for for colors well i suppose actually you could go both ways couldn't you because like when you're saying stain them as dark as you can i mean even if you mm. might put an ebony stain and a high glass you know uh, finish like a diamond yeah. glaze yeah. finish then yeah. you'll get the light reflected from the shine Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's got one option. The other thing is you can paint a uh, floor. We would have a paint, a floor paint called Floor Shield. And um, but yes, it will discolor in time and it will chip in time. I won't lie. I mean, I know I could give you the process of paint, sanding it right down and treating all those knots and mm -hmm. then painting it. And that's the right process. But I can tell you honestly that I've painted a, a floor um, in a bedroom before and I have afterwards, it has chipped here and there and I love it. I don't, I don't yes. mind. Yes, I think yes, if you're going yes. to be really perfectionist about it, don't paint it, stain yes. it or else mm -hmm. stain, uh, paint it, but do, do it right, sand it right mm -hmm. down to the bone. Mm -hmm. But um, a, a, a bit of aging on something, it's, it's distressed, you know, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? And it can that's look part of the charm. living yeah. in your mm -hmm. house, yeah. Yes, so yes. it wouldn't bother me. You can put a rug down. It's only actually where the legs of the bed were on it is that where it would have chipped, you know. So mm -hmm. and like I've touched it up once or twice and it's no big deal. So I think yeah. it's about how perfect you want it. Sure. You know, it will be yeah. better the pine. Either option. It'll be better. It's going to work, you know, for yeah. sure. And actually, are there any, did you look sell any products or are there any products, you know, which is like a varnish that would protect color from from sun, you know, from changing color because of sun or things like that well i mean if it is going to be exterior then you would have to use a paint that is made for exterior so like the bespoke colors that i've talked about we have a full fan deck of colors that are mm. and these are all color fast so they're not going to fade in outside mm -hmm. light now mm -hmm. if you use a color that there isn't a recipe for a weather shield recipe for mm -hmm. and it, it will fade and we wouldn't be uh, recommending it so okay. uh, do we have something to put over it to protect it? Not really then because it's better, it's like the paint itself is enough. And if you're looking at, you know, it's still at that pink there, that's not going to fade in time because yeah. of the fact that that would be color fast. So okay. it's already in the paint 
yeah, to protect it. And inside, if you wanted to protect something, um, I have done with the painted stairs, I've put a diamond glaze, like a clear diamond glaze varnish over it. That's a water-based varnish and it's extremely um, durable and it has, um, a, it cures over time. So it gets harder um, for the first few kind of 10 days, it, it, it hardens. And that's very good for putting over something like a painted uh, stairs or a painted floor. Floor. Uh, okay. Yeah, and because it's water-based, it won't discolor. Okay, then no, that's great. And actually excellent tip about external because that'd be heartbreaking if you decided you'd yeah. find this amazing color and the whole thing starts to, yes. to fade over time. So make sure yeah. the product is suitable for where you're putting it. Exactly, yeah, that's, exactly. That's great. We should sell it to you if it's not, if there isn't a weather shield formula for it. So okay. that, that yeah. comes up in the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful, great. Um, and let me see, there's another question. What are we looking at here? Oh, yes, yeah. somebody again um, about pine um, woodwork. And I think we had this the last time as well. This really is a common issue. Yeah. Uh, so they're looking for something kind of neutral to use and then some sort of color for their, their woodwork. And I think we both agreed that our, our favorite white was the, the signature white from Signature Collection. Yes. Yeah. So really, honestly, cannot recommend that enough. That's yeah. what I have. I don't know if you guys can see the ceiling here. But, and again, that color doesn't alter because sometimes the whites can change oh. a little bit over time, particularly on woodwork, but it's just been the most fantastic yeah. shade to use. So yeah. yeah, I definitely advise painting the woodwork mm -hmm. out. Yes, another thing I've noticed lately, um, a lot of people are getting into this, and uh, is painting the woodwork the same color as the wall. Have you oh, noticed yeah. that? You know, yes. where you yeah. see the starting in the wall and actually on the cover of the catalog this year, we have, we kind of, you can kind of see an image here where we have the, the architrave and the wall the same color. It's all done. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a good way of kind of covering up the pine as well, because it's less likely to see if you get the little yellow circles in time. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, um, not see them as obviously, but of course you can treat those knots as well. But mm -hmm. um, I quite like that look, but I'm kind of not completely at ease at it myself for recommending it always because I like something that can flow through a house. And I know you say that's very important to you as well, this whole flow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wouldn't sure. be inclined to want to paint all of the walls and all of the skirtings the same color everywhere. So mm -hmm. I know it can work with, say, in a room, and I would, I, I would do it with, say, in, you know, a teenager's room or, you know, a whole, the interior of a sitting room or whatever that you want to close the door and say, now it's all one. Yes. But for me, myself personally, I just like the idea of having the continuity of the white trim, the signature white trim, and then the, the, the different color for the wall. That's but it. that is another way of dealing with it, I suppose. It's no, that's wonderful advice. And actually, we've done that quite a bit, especially in small rooms, you know, yes. or dark rooms, believe it or not. And actually, say, take something like a, a little guest WC. So this is where we always encourage people to, to have lots of fun with their color. But we've done that where we've painted the, the walls, the woodwork, everything in the same color, often a really dark color. Mm -hmm. But we've painted the ceiling in that color as well. And it just mm -hmm. gives you this gorgeous little cocoon-like effect. So that can yeah. work really well. You know, if it's a small yeah. den or something like that, yeah. you can make it yeah. feel really snug. So, yeah, no, that, that's a great tip. Yeah. It is. And it's mm -hmm. also for something that you want to disappear. You know, yes. it's like, you know, the way if you're doing something like a commercial building or a residential care unit or something like that, you know, you don't necessarily want people going into the staff rooms or the mm. sales room or whatever. So you paint all of the, the door and the wall the same color there. Whereas mm -hmm. then if you wanted something to be seen or like, you know, for bathrooms or whatever, you would make them all a pop of color so that people mm -hmm. would instantly recognize where that is. So mm -hmm. it's a good way of helping, you know, if you have an ugly wardrobe or something like that, but you still want to keep it in the room, paint them all the exact same color as the wall and it, it kind of disappears. Yeah, no, it's a great tip. Fantastic. We have a question here. Um, would you recommend the, these types of neutrals? It was a, a little bit back. So I think it was when we were talking about the muslin and the, um, the cinders and stuff for mm -hmm. stairs and landing in a terrace house. Uh, it's quite dark, no natural light upstairs on the landing. So my answer would be yes, uh, Sarah, because it's going to be, it's going to feel totally different. And I think landings and hallways are places where you can go a bit darker. You know, they're, they're spaces that you move through. Um, you're not going to be sitting in them or spending long periods of time. So those kind of shades are going to work really well. And I think like we were discussing, they'll feel very different depending on what yes. space you're in and how much light. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think they're they're great colors and they'll go with so many different floor finishes, uh, mm -hmm. carpet tones, all of that. So they give you a lot of flexibility, yeah. which is really good. Sounds good. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to see. I'm saying it. Um, great. And then, Cor, were there any um, other images you wanted me to, to share from those, any of your exteriors? I had just put in a few. I might have had uh, one or two with, oh, yeah, I love this. Um, it's just uh, front door color, clearly. But I, yeah. it's, again, it's, it's talking about um, looking outside at what you already have. So for someone mm -hmm. that has brick on their house, think mm -hmm. of the brick as though it's a color. So sometimes red, brick is red, it's the earthy, it's the browns. And then the colors that sit opposite that, they're the contrasting colors or the complementary colors. And that's why mm -hmm. teal works so well with brick. I love teals and greens. I just think they look really, really well. Um, and like that, it would be as if you had a sofa in the color of that brick and what color could you put on your feature wall, you know, or your cushion. And mm -hmm. for people to think that way about it. Now that's a, a color that would have to be mixed. It's not one that's ready made, but it's just showing you, um, you know, the depth of the color if you use it for just the front door. And my tip is always when it comes to the front door as well, if your window frames are white or off white or whatever color, paint the door frame in that color too. Yes, I would totally it. agree with you. Yes, completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. It makes the colour pop. And if that yeah. teal colour was right up to the frame, mm. it would fall into the, uh, the yeah. brick and it wouldn't do what the white is doing for it. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you need. Is you need it's, like your, it's like the piece of art that you had uh, yeah. there a minute ago. It's like the piece of art behind me. It's the frame that makes it pop. And that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what you need. It's just that even if it's only two inches, it makes a huge difference. Massive difference. No, it's that's totally, true. it just defines or even outlines the color as well because it, it merges, it just blends into one. Yes. Yeah. You know, the, really it's, it's, and it's something we come up against all the time, people really struggling with it. Um, yeah. But it makes such a difference just to have mm -hmm. that frame, to have that contrast is really yes. what, because you can see it there, that door is just popping out. It's a really it beautiful color. And that's the weather shield satin wood finish. So that's, you can see there isn't a high glass shine off the yeah. door. And so that's a water-based paint. And this is something, this is a kind of a couple mm -hmm. of hours job for somebody okay. to do. You know, yeah. a small roller, um, you know, uh, you, you put on your undercoat and then you put this on and like there's a weather shield undercoat that suits. And um, honestly, this, you know, like I would be recommending for people to paint their front door every year just because you can and because yeah. of the lift that it gives you and yeah. um, and the fun colors you can have. I know we mentioned this the last time, but I just love um, a real pop of color on a front door. Yeah. And it just, it's, it, it, it can say so much. It's the saluting part, you know, and that's the yeah. important bit is the first thing you see, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lovely idea. And actually there was a house near where I grew up and they did used to do that. They would paint their, I think they still do it. They paint their door a different color every year. And it's yeah. really lovely to see what what are they doing this year, you know, and it yeah. always <laughs> almost transformed the, you know, the, the, the look of the house. And it's oh. a lovely idea. Really lovely. I think that's what water-based paint has done though as well, because, you know, yeah. a job for like a glass, you know, it was, you had to do the primer, then the undercoat, then the glass and glass is sticky and heavy to use and the whole lot. And, like this is so much easier. You wash your brushes in water. There's no smell. It dries in a couple of hours. You know, so it's so much easier now. And this, this is so many products that make life that bit easier. Things like how good quality masking tape is. You know, stuff yeah. like that yeah. that has made yeah, yeah. decorating so much more uh, doable for yourself. And that's why people are yeah. having a go. You know, I know when you when you get a decorator in, it's wonderful as well. But yeah. if if you if you're at home and you have time, this is the time to to have a go and do it yourself. To try it out, no, for like sure. Oh. And you mentioned masking tape, Gore. I'm just going to share this image. So, oh. and I'm covering it up. I, I apologize, but this again, just a really simple idea and a fun way to, particularly for a kids' room. You know, this is literally we masked. Uh, kind of off a triangle section and painted the room kind of half in a white and then in a yellow Beautiful. and just add instant impact you know so mm. again that's a really fun thing that yeah. people could could try themselves um yeah especially if your wall mm. is already in good condition you know if you have a room and you just fancy something different but um you don't want to paint the whole room just doing something like that a big triangle mm. or you know geometric shapes they just look fantastic and the the masking tape Get the good quality one, the low tack, that's not going to take off the underneath paint beforehand. Okay. Um, and I would also say, don't be too uh, perfect about drawing, the, you know, measuring I like what you did there with the diagonal, because, you know, if you do straight, straight down, um, you know, vertical lines, 
then they can look off if you're if your uh, door frame is slightly That's you know right, yeah. uh, you'll yeah. start that'll start bugging you so do go kind of more um diagonal and um almost kind of irregular so yeah. that you don't notice if it isn't perfect because yeah. that's the kind of thing that could keep you awake at night <laughs> definitely much more forgiving for sure yes. and then this image i've popped in again because this is where oh, we it. went really dark and this wasn't a particularly bright room it's actually quite a sunny day but you can see that's um light call uh so it's it's almost a black yes. it's like an off yeah. black yeah. But it just created the most tranquil, kind of relaxing atmosphere in that space. And, you know, when you would have gone in, the instinct would be to try and brighten it. But actually, we did the exact opposite. So that, that's a real example there of how to use a dark color in mm. what's, you know, considered a, a sort of a dark space. Mm -hmm. I think it's about breaking it up as well, isn't it? If you yeah. have something to put on the wall, um, you know, it, again, it's not about necessarily a huge expanse of black wall. Mm -hmm. If you're a bit nervous at first, although that can be very effective too. But if people are a little cautious at the beginning of using colours so dark, I love them myself, I really do. I just, I could bathe in that now that it's just divine. Mm -hmm. But um, if you are a little bit nervous, I would always say to people, just do a bit first, um, you know, a, a short yeah. wall or, or, you know, even I, I love the high wall going up the stairs and a deep, deep colour that can look fantastic and dramatic as well. So, Lovely. you know, um, yeah. kind of just walk around the house and think of where could I go and where could I go that dark, you know, mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, no, great, great. Well, Corey, look, I'm just conscious of your time and I think we've, we've covered the questions unless anybody has anything else. So thank you so much for all your fabulous advice. Honestly, it's uh, your wealth of knowledge. So, so great to have <laughs> you. talk all day. I mean, it's a We certainly magic. could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we'll never no, run out of content. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 for sure. And then just to remind people, do go ahead and download the the ebook, the color ebook. Loads and loads of advice there too. So um, if you are planning a project, uh, be sure to go and grab that. So Corey, thank you so much. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Thank uh, you. Enjoy the bank holiday, and look forward to talking to you very soon. Have a great weekend, Denise. Bye, okay. Everybody. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you all. Bye, 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 bye.